In this video, you are going to learn about the difference between PLC and DCS. The information we are going to actually cover in this video that would cover almost every difference that we have between PLC and DCS. When we talk about the PLC, PLCs are very good for discrete control. PLCs are going to be very favorite for automobile industry. Any factory floor where you have large number of the discrete IOs, you are definitely going to see PLC there. But when we talk about the DCS, DCS is about analog control. And analog control can be more found into the process industry like fertilizer, chemical, petrochemical. When we talk about power plants and similar process industry where you have actually large number of the analog IOs and you have a lot of complex control loops there you are going to actually see DCS a lot. One thing is very important to understand PLC works on a centralized mechanism. In a PLC architecture you will see one particular PLC controller and all associated operation is actually linked to that controller. What will happen if in the case you got one complete process to be controlled by PLC, then what would happen if in the case that PLC fails? All associated operation would definitely gonna stop. So whereas in DCS that works on a decentralized control system or distributed control system, where you have multiple controllers to take care about each unit. For instance, your plant have four different units Every unit would have its own controller. Not only one controller, there would be a redundant controller. If in the case your main controller fails in any other area, operation would not definitely stop at that time. Because if in the case your main controller will fail, redundant will take care of the job. But if in the case your redundant will fail, then only that particular area would be affected rest of the areas would be definitely functioning. But when we talk about centralized control, the centralized control, we have one controller and in a distributed, you have distributed different controllers to take care about the job of specific areas. That's why in a PLC, you will see if in the case your main PLC controller fails, all associated operations would definitely stop. Now we will actually talk about how is actually programming in PLCs and versus DCS. In a PLCs, you have to actually make customized functions for everything. Now you got in, you know, predefined functions, some of the functions available in latest PLCs from Siemens and Allen Bradley. But when we talk about DCS, DCS have predefined function for all of almost everything. Programming wise, your DCS is very easy because you don't need to write, you don't need to write 100 lines code for a letter logic like you have to do in a PLC. In a DCS environment, everything works on FBD and there are predefined FBDs available. You just have to plug and play. So programming wise, you don't need to put a lot of effort in programming when we talk about DCS app compared to PLCs. When we talk about DCS, DCS takes a lot of time to process the data. Whereas your PLCs actually are very quick. DCS is not right solution in the case your response time is critical parameter in your control system. PLCs can handle few thousands of the IO whereas your DCS system can handle 10,000 and more than that IOs, particularly your analog IOs. PLCs are best for the dedicated processes whereas your DCS actually is best for the environment where you have a lot of frequent changes in your logic. Might need to, you know, add a lot of new transmitters, a lot of new control loop, then you have to better rely on DCS as compared to PLCs. PLCs can be programmed actually based on your requirements, based on your needs, but whereas your DCS normally comes in from the vendor side, pre-program and most of the things are already placed in there. If you see the difference of the cost, PLC is less costly as compared to DCS. DCS system have its own operator screens where you can visualize what's going on into the process. If in the case you want to visualize the things in the PLC end, you need to have a specified HMI for that. You can opt for runtime HMI or you can have a hard base HMI or touch panel for that. 
Now the question is which one is best for your industry? So definitely if in the case your requirement is to have a large number of analog loops, you definitely need to go for a DCS system. But whereas if in the case you have large number of the discrete IOs like in automobile industry, you are definitely going to go for PLC based solution. PLC is definitely less costly as compared to DCS. So if in the case you have a limited number of the IOs, it's wise to go for a PLC. But if in the case you have a large number of the IOs and you expect a lot of changes in addition to your process control system, in that case you have to go for DCS because in a PLC if you need to get in some new equipment added you might need to have another PLC. So it's wise if in the case your plant have a like oil and gas, petrochemical, fertilizer industries, kind of industries it's not wise to actually have a PLC controlling everything. It's better to have a dedicated DCS system. You have to make sure when you are selecting DCS systems every industry have its own specified DCS system. For instance, Delta V Emerson is specialized for oil and gas industry, whereas in a power sector, you are gonna see a lot of ABB DCS system. If you like this video, consider hitting the like button. And if you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing. Till next video, take care and Allah Hafiz.